Now we're going to take a look at how our Autodesk Design Review application allows us to do intelligent markups between our Revit software as well as some of our other applications. We're only going to demonstrate how it works with Revit here, but most of what we're going to show also works with our AutoCAD-based tools. Uh, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this model. It's a residential home edition, and we've already set some sheets up. We've got some views visible. Let's go ahead and figure out how we would mark this data up and then work with it back here in the Revit software. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to one of my sheets. I'll go ahead and open up our dimensions plan. And what we can do from here is um, uh, just verify that the sheets are set up correctly, and then go ahead and export this information to our DWF format. Now the way that I do that is by simply browsing to where it says File, and then selecting Export, and I'll select my DWF. Now from here, I can go ahead and specify my sheet set that I wanna export on. And I also have the ability to set up some different DWF properties. Always good to double check your print setup and make sure that it's set correctly um, in alignment with your sheet. Once that's done, you can go ahead and select next, and then we'll go ahead and specify this as our design review file. Okay, now once that's set, it's gonna go ahead and export that information and we can go ahead and open up our design review application. And I'm going to open up our file here. And once that file opens, you're actually gonna see on our thumbnails that everything we generated back inside of uh, design review or back inside of Revit is visible right here on the screen. And I can actually use some of our different control features that we have actually in the Revit software to take a look at this. Um, so what I'm going to do is select on some of these components. You'll notice when you pick on any of these objects, whether it's a roof, a wall, a window, what's great is the software actually maintains the properties of that specific object. So these are intelligent, it's bringing all the information in, not just some of the basic data. Now that extends to our 2D views as well. So if I open up one of our floor plan views here and I select on a wall, you'll notice that the information about that wall is present as well. So not only do I have the ability to view this information, really view the dynamic data from our Revit project, but I also can do some basic markups. So I'm gonna go up to our Markup and Measure tab. And from here, I'm gonna just use some of our, our, our core functionality. Start with Length. Uh, length's pretty simple to use. It's just sort of point and click. Uh, most people don't want to stand with uh, standard inches like you see here. So what I can do is go to my measurement properties and I can change length to feet and fractional inches. That way I get the display I want. Now in addition to being able to do some generic measurements, I also can do things like draw lines. And within drawing lines, I can also change the color um, and I can go ahead and adjust the thickness of our lines. I also have different shapes that I can draw. And with those shapes, not only can I um, can I obviously get the borders or boundaries, but I also can do fill. And those fills also have the ability to change in color as well as in transparency. So I can actually get some transparency shapes in there. There's also some different highlighter features that without even having to, to go ahead and make those changes, you can select and, um, and get that display from the transparency perspective. And you've got freehand uh, uh, highlighting. Now the real uh, advantage that this platform provides us is the ability to do intelligent markups. So as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my circle callout and I'm gonna draw a circle around the bathroom here and I'm gonna place my callout tag. Now once that's been placed, I can go ahead and uh, ask a question uh, to a specific user. Let's say I wanted to just understand uh, can And once I've asked that question, I can go ahead and set the status. Now what's nice is depending on the status I specify, you'll notice it'll actually change the color of our mark. Now this is a question, so I'm gonna specify question. You'll notice it's now green. I can go ahead and add a secondary call out using a different tag type. Maybe this time I'll select the polyline feature. So maybe I wanna include a portion of that wall. Now once that's done, same idea, specify a number and then add your note. Now, once this data has been added, you also have the ability to add stamps to your sheets. 
What's great about stamps is not only can you go ahead and select one of the stamps you see on screen here, there's also the ability to generate your own stamps and also create um, different types of symbols uh, that you can generate a catalog for. So each company can have their own set of standards here. I'm gonna go ahead and select stamps. I'll say for review and I'll place that right on screen here. Now, in addition to being able to place these views here and see them in my markup tab, I can also access them directly from other sheets. So let's say I was over on our um, elevation view and from our elevation view, I wanted to go ahead and add an annotation. So I had another uh, item right here. And in this one, um, I'll just add the tag three. Now what you'll see is over here on the screen, I'm seeing my different sheets in the hierarchy. And by selecting back to one of the other sheets, it'll take me to the page with those set markups. Now this in by itself is not really all that different from a lot of the other markup applications that are out there. But this software does sort of differentiate itself because of its ability to work directly with the Revit software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And once it's saved, I'm gonna close out and I'm gonna go back into our Revit software. Now from Revit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and import our markup set. And by selecting the DWF markup link on the insert tab, finding our file and saying open, the software will actually tell me which sheets have markups on them. So I can be selective in which ones I wanna import. Uh, let's go ahead and import the dimension plan. So I'll go ahead and say okay. And once I've done that, you'll actually see the markups right here on screen. And what's nice is that I can select on those markups and by selecting them, I can view their properties. So in this case, you'll see that this is a question. And if I look at the history, I can see the question being, can we increase the size of the restroom? Um, I could go ahead and select on that. I'll say for review and for the notes section, I'll say, nope. and I'll add that just basic note there. I also could go ahead and review a comment here, like for instance, uh, this item, which was for review, which we said, please review. I'm just gonna say done, and I'll say meets code. I also have this little for review symbol. In this case, I have done the review, so for status, I could just say done, so that we know that that's been uh, completed and fixed. And I can go ahead and update this. Now I have two ways that I can update it. I can go ahead and re-export this DWF set, or I can simply update the existing DWF. Now, the reason that you would do one over the others is pretty straightforward. If you've made significant changes, or for that matter, any change to the actual Revit file, moved a wall, added a door, whatever the case may be, your best bet is to go ahead and do an export. If all you've done is update the notations, well, then you can just update the uh, imported link. And the way that you do that's really simple. Again, on the Insert tab, select Manage Links. You'll find the DWF Markup button. You'll see your markup right here. Just simply say Save Markups. Say uh, OK once that's uh, saved. And then what we'll be able to do is open this directly inside of our Design Review application. Now, if you had made changes, you'd want to do the export process again. Uh, when you open it, what's great is that it'll also continue um, almost to some degree slip sheeting the markups that you've originally done. So it's really um, a simple, seamless way of doing it. But in this case, um, when I go ahead and open that file, you'll notice that I now have some checkboxes here. And if I click on for review, you'll actually notice that these colors have, uh, have gone ahead and changed on me. So um, the previous one, this uh, was green and the top one here was purple. Now when I click on these, like as an example, this restroom, you'll notice that in the history, it includes my Revit username. And just below that, it shows the status change for review. Nope, structural limitations. Uh, same would be the case with the, uh, the notation that I have up here. Again, you're seeing that update in the history feed. So a really simple way to update documentation between the Revit platform and design review uh, with users that may not be using Revit day in and day out. There's lots of other features available to you here in Design Review, including things like compare and contrast and the ability to do really complex reviews of 3D models. But I wanted to just give you an overview of how this operates. Please uh, leave any questions that you might have in the feed at the bottom of the page. Thank you very much.